The Evolution of the Legend of Zelda Franchise The Legend of Zelda is arguably one of the video game industry's most beloved and highly regarded franchises of all time. With the upcoming release of Tears of the Kingdom on May 12, 2023, there has never been a better time to look back at the rich history the Legend of Zelda franchise has left behind over the past 25 years and explore the ways that it has evolved from game to game. The Birth of a Hero the inspiration for the Legend of Zelda series may not surprise you. Shigeru Miyamoto, the genius behind developing the franchise, would often venture outside on his own as a kid and explore the hillsides and caves found scattered around. Miyamoto stated during an interview that exploring these deep caves and surrounding forests around his house would eventually serve as the foundation of inspiration for the Legend of Zelda series. This makes sense considering how close to nature the settings of each Zelda games are. Many years later, the story and setting for the series would be fleshed out by Takashi Tezuka, a video game designer from Japan who has worked on some of the most iconic games of all time, including Zelda, Mario, and even Star Fox. Tezuka would draw inspiration from works like The Lord of the Rings and other fantasy novels and incorporate those themes into the early concepts for the game. Other outside sources would influence some major themes of the game, including Miyamoto's fascination with Zelda Fitzgerald and Peter Pan. Major backstory points would be plotted by talented screenwriter Keiji Terui, who had previously worked on prolific anime shows like Dr. Slump and Dragon Ball. The backstory he wrote would eventually find its way into the back of the player's manual for the first game. After it was all said and done, the core lore of the Legend of Zelda franchise was ready to immerse players into the world of Hyrule for the very first time. The deep lore and cohesive storytelling would all come to fruition in 1986 with the release of The Legend of Zelda. The Legend of Zelda, 1986 Directed and designed by Shigeru Miyamoto, The Legend of Zelda was first released on the Famicom in 1986 in Japan followed by a North American release on the NES in 1987. Development of the game took around two years, and most of the developers were working on Super Mario Bros. during this same time. Splitting the ideas between the two games actually proved to be an advantage, as the developers made conscious efforts to design Zelda in a way opposite to the linear Mario games. This led to Zelda's non-linear design, which is still a major aspect of Zelda games like Breath of the Wild and the upcoming Tears of the Kingdom. The game introduced the world of video games to a non-linear, choice-driven design that allowed players more freedom than ever to play and experience the game how they wanted to. It would feature the first appearances of well-known franchise trademarks like rupees, heart containers, and the slew of well-known items featured in modern Zelda games. Another cool fact about the first Legend of Zelda game is that it is the first game ever that allows a player to save their progress. All of these innovative design features were not wasted, as the story of how The Legend of Zelda began proved to be one of the most iconic ever told in video games. The story focuses on the kingdom of Hyrule in a world created by three goddesses. As a gift to humans, these goddesses create a magical artifact known as the Triforce. It was said that anyone who possesses all three virtues of the Triforce, power, courage, and wisdom, would be granted any wish they desired. Players were thrown into the role of Link, who is tasked with saving the kingdom of Hyrule from the evil and powerful Dark Prince Ganon. Having recently invaded the kingdom and stolen the Triforce of Power, Ganon plans to use it to acquire the other pieces of the Triforce. The story leads players on an epic journey that pits them against powerful foes and challenging puzzles in an attempt to rescue Princess Zelda and save the kingdom of Hyrule. The story from the first Legend of Zelda would serve as a strong foundation for the much more complex and rich lore that would be added to the Zelda universe later on. The reception for The Legend of Zelda was extremely positive and it became an overnight bestseller, with over a million copies sold on day one in Japan and 6.5 million copies sold worldwide. The game was widely regarded as groundbreaking and set the stage for the franchise to branch out and expand on its successful design. Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, 1987 The team from the original Legend of Zelda would try to duplicate the success of their first title with The Adventure of Link. 
released in 1987 for the Famicom in Japan and later on the NES in North America in late 1988. Director Miyamoto and story writer Tezuka would again team up to work their magic and tried a much different approach this time around. An entirely new team was assembled for the development process and many new gameplay mechanics were added. The biggest changes were the addition of experience levels, which were used to upgrade attack, magic, and life by defeating enemies. There were also additional side-scrolling mechanics added in addition to the top-down views from the previous game. The combat system was also overhauled and made more difficult. Enemies were now more responsive, and Link was gifted some new abilities like jumping and mid-air techniques. With these new gameplay elements, players would once again step into the role of Link, many years after the events of The Legend of Zelda. The story begins with 16-year-old Link noticing a strange mark on the back of his hand, resembling the crest of Hyrule. He seeks out Impa, a friend from the first game, who tells him that this mark proves he is the chosen hero of Hyrule. He then takes Link to a secret chamber to reveal a sleeping Princess Zelda from long ago. Only the chosen hero of Hyrule can awaken Zelda from her deep sleep, and the player is tasked with assembling all the pieces of the Triforce while keeping Ganon and his forces at bay. The game was met with generally positive reviews, although it did not reach the heights of the first game. This is likely because of the drastic changes made to the gameplay that threw players and critics off who were expecting something similar to the first game. One thing the game has going for it is that it is one of the first games to combine role-playing and platforming mechanics into the same game successfully. It would be a little while before Zelda has another title, but it would prove worth the wait. The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, 1991 Four years after the moderate success of The Adventures of Link, Nintendo would release one of the most groundbreaking and beloved titles of all time, A Link to the Past. The game made good use of the new hardware provided by the SNES and provided players with an unforgettable gaming experience. Miyamoto returned to produce the project, and new writers Kensuke Tanabe and Yoshiaki Koizumi were brought in to help flesh out the story. The gameplay was much more like the original Legend of Zelda and featured a top-down view and the classic combat system. One of the most notable changes is the size of the world that Link had to explore. Because of the success that the franchise had already had, Nintendo provided a much larger budget allowing developers to utilize the new SNES hardware to the fullest. This freedom gave developers the courage to break the trend of using only 512 KB of storage space for games and upping it to a full 1 MB. This allowed the world's size to almost double over previous Zelda games, making for a more expansive and engaging experience. Newcomers Tanabe and Koizumi did not disappoint when it came to the story and delivered one of the most iconic Zelda storylines ever. Set in a time long ago before the events of the first Zelda game, the player takes on the role of Link, one of the last descendants of the Knights of Hyrule. He has been awakened by a telepathic message from Princess Zelda warning him that she has been trapped by a new villain, Aghanim. Aghanim plans to free a trapped Ganon from the Dark World and Link is tasked with stopping him by acquiring the legendary Master Sword. The Master Sword would go on to be a trademark of the Zelda franchise, so this game is notable for being its first ever appearance. Link to the Past would go on to be critically acclaimed for its graphics, design, and gameplay. It remains one of the most beloved SNES games of all time. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening 1993 Link's Awakening was the first Zelda game released on a handheld console and featured many of the same mechanics that had made the franchise successful over the years. Released in 1993 for the Game Boy, Link's Awakening actually began as sort of a side project created by Kazuwaki Morita. Morita was testing the Game Boy development kits and created the Zelda-like game to experiment with. More and more developers got in on it and it became a fun project to do in their spare time. Following the success of A Link to the Past, Takashi Tezuka expressed his interest in developing a handheld Zelda game and used this Zelda-like game as the base for Link's Awakening. The game was extremely similar to Link to the Past, but major changes were made to the story. Tanabe and Koizumi once again handled the script and decided to go in a new direction with the characters and the world building. 
The story begins after the events of Link to the Past and finds the hero Link traveling to other lands to train to combat future threats. Leaving the land of Hyrule behind, Link shipwrecks on the remote island of Koholint, where he meets new friends and enemies and is tasked with waking the Windfish. I don't want to spoil it if you have never played it, but the story takes some really interesting twists and turns and has one of the most satisfying endings of any Zelda game. The story, gameplay, and handheld graphics were all extremely positively received and this success would drive Nintendo to produce several more handheld Zelda games over the years. There would be several years before the next title in the Zelda franchise as Nintendo pondered where to take the series next. The next installment of the Zelda franchise would revolutionize the gaming industry forever. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 1998 Ocarina of Time was released for the Nintendo 64 in 1998 and changed the way people looked at video games forever. It featured one of the most well-known stories in video games along with some of the most innovative and immersive gameplay ever created at the time. While most of the developers at Nintendo were not well versed in the new 3D technology made possible by the Nintendo 64, they were determined to create something new and unprecedented using the hardware. Miyamoto returned once again to help direct and produce and oversaw a large team of other directors also working on the project. Together, they would bring the Zelda franchise into a 3D space by overhauling the world, gameplay mechanics, combat system, and much more. The results were astounding. Players were met with a fully interactive world in which they could explore as Link in any way they wanted. Characters were given more life and personality, and combat, bosses, and world travel were all enhanced. The story for the game was also updated and used ideas from Miyamoto, Koizumi, and Tanabe to craft the lore and backstory of the world. This dream team would go on to write one of the best stories told in gaming. The story begins with the fairy Navi awakening Link from a nightmare in which he witnesses familiar foe Ganon chasing a young Princess Zelda on horseback. Navi brings Link to the great Deku Tree who tells him of Ganon and his plans. He tasks Link with traveling to Hyrule to meet with the young Princess Zelda to discuss the threat. This starts Link on a journey through time in an effort to undo the damage done by Ganon after he acquired the Triforce. The game was met with overwhelmingly positive reviews and is still to this day regarded as one of the best video games of all time. Ocarina of Time hit all the right marks with players and reviews, including gameplay, score, and visuals. Nintendo would try to recreate the success of Ocarina of Time with Zelda's next release two years later. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask 2000 Majora's Mask was released for the Nintendo 64 in the year 2000 and was one of the most unique releases in the Zelda franchise. While it stays true to the gameplay of the original Ocarina of Time, several new elements were added including character transformations and a 3-day time cycle that limited the number of tasks a player could get done before resetting the timer. Development for Majora's Mask was extremely fast, with most of the game being completed in one year. Developers knew they would have trouble topping the enormous success of Ocarina of Time, and many stated they struggled to come up with fresh ideas for the next entry. Miyamoto and Koizumi teamed up once again to develop the new time-based gameplay mechanics that set players on a three-day time cycle. This gameplay element made it so that players had to prioritize the things they got done as the world would reset after the three days had passed. The script for the game was written by Mitsuhiro Takano, and was inspired by the 1998 film Run Lola Run. The story actually begins only three days after the events of Ocarina of Time. Link is shown on a quest searching for his lost fairy Navi. During his search, Link is ambushed by a new villain, Skull Kid, accompanied by his two fairy companions, Tattle and Tail. After stealing Link's horse and the Ocarina of Time, Link pursues them and gets trapped. Skull Kid then curses Link and turns him into a measly Deku scrub. Alone, Link tries to navigate his way around the world in his new body before meeting up with Tattle, who has been left behind. The journey sees Link and Tattle work together to stop Skull Kid from using Majora's Mask and the Ocarina of Time to end the world. Majora's Mask achieved critical acclaim and proved once again that Nintendo was king of video games in the early 2000s. While not as beloved as Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask is arguably the more technically impressive due to its unique design elements. 
Before the next major 3D release in 2002, Nintendo would round out the era of handhelds with one of the most popular handheld games in history. The Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons, 2001. Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons were released on the Game Boy Color in 2001 and featured gameplay similar to Link's Awakening and Link to the Past. The games were designed to interact with each other but provided totally different gameplay experiences. Oracle of Ages was more puzzle-based and Oracle of Season was more action and combat-based. Upon completion of either game, a password was provided that can be entered to play an alternative game of either Ages or Seasons. This alternative version of the game has different plot points that can allow the game to serve as a sequel to the one you have completed. The gameplay and mechanics were actually designed by Flagship, a subsidiary of Capcom, making these games some of the few not directly developed by Nintendo. Miyamoto again oversaw production, and Flagship provided the story outline for the games. Both games task Link with saving Princess Zelda from a new villain, Twin Rova. Both games were met with generally positive reviews, though many reported issues with the sound quality. This would be the last Zelda entry for the Game Boy and Game Boy Color era, and would be followed by one more beloved entry for the Game Boy Advance in 2002. The Legend of Zelda, Four Swords, 2002 2002 was a good year for Zelda fans. It saw two major releases for the franchise. The first was Four Swords of the Game Boy Advance. It was the first multiplayer Zelda game and came bundled with a copy of Link to the Past. Four Swords allowed players to link up their Game Boy Advances and work together to solve puzzles, explore dungeons, and face mighty bosses. The dungeons were randomized each time which provided more replayability. Four Swords was developed collaboratively by Nintendo and Capcom after the success of Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons. Takashi Tezuka helped oversee the project's production and helped to develop the new plot lines. The story of Four Swords begins before the events of Ocarina of Time and shows Link and Zelda approaching a sword stuck in a stone called the Four Sword. After Zelda is kidnapped, Link is tasked with removing the sword from the stone and rescuing Zelda from her captor. Four Swords was positively received and currently holds the title for highest rated Game Boy Advance game on Metacritic and game rankings. While not to overshadow the triumphs of Four Swords, a much bigger title was also set to release in 2002, one that was long in the making. The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker 2002 Originally debuted in 2000, The Wind Waker was finally released on the Nintendo GameCube in 2002. While many players cited their issues with it at first, it would go on to become one of the most popular GameCube games ever released. The game featured a cel-shaded style that some players found off-putting or childish. This caused players to voice their desire for a more mature Zelda game, which Nintendo would deliver in the near future. It featured many familiar mechanics from the 3D Zelda lineup but had a much more expansive open world and a focus on water travel. Miyamoto returned to team up with longtime story writer and producer Takashi Tezuka to craft the new gameplay elements and story. The developers worked really hard to diverge as far as possible from previous ideas so as not to seem derivative of older Zelda games in the franchise. The results are a more cartoony art style that players either loved or hated. The plot of the game revolves around Link's coming of age and his struggle to rescue his sister from Ganondorf after she has been kidnapped. The game was met with positive acclaim from both critics and players, though the art style was a polarizing design choice. The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap 2004 The Minish Cap was another extremely successful Zelda release for the Game Boy Advance. Released in 2004, the game features mechanics similar to other handheld Zelda titles, with the added feature of shrinking to enhance gameplay. The Minish Cap was another successful collaboration between Capcom and Nintendo. The art style was similar to that used in The Wind Waker, which makes sense because Miyamoto and Aonuma returned to oversee production. The Minish Cap story takes place long before the events of the Ocarina of Time and focuses on fleshing out the story of Vati and the creation of the Four Sword, serving as a prequel to Four Swords. The game was well received and sold over 1.76 million copies worldwide. 
this would be the last Zelda title released on the Game Boy Advance and rounded out an extremely impressive run on last generation handheld software. The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess 2006 in 2006, Nintendo answered the call for a more mature Zelda game with Twilight Princess, released for GameCube and the Wii 2006. The game featured a darker story and tone and motion control mechanics for those playing on the Wii U. Developed by the same team that worked on Wind Waker, director Eiji Aonuma expressed his desire for a more mature and realistic Zelda game. Producer Miyamoto agreed with this and together they mapped out a new approach to storytelling and gameplay for the next installment. The development process was complex because it was decided there needed to be two versions of the game, one specifically for the GameCube and one for the Wii. This added some extra time to the development process but ultimately seemed to be the best decision. Having access to both versions would satisfy both player bases and packaging the game with the Wii increased launch sales. The darker tone of the story is one of the highlights of the game and provides one of the most engaging narratives of any Zelda title. The story begins with Link working as a ranch hand in Ordon Village. He is pulled into a strange forest by a twilight monster, turned into a wolf, and imprisoned. Link is freed by Midna, a peculiar creature who offers her help with some conditions. Together, they set out to stop an evil sorcerer from destroying the land of Hyrule. Twilight Princess was another massive success in the Zelda franchise and received perfect scores from several publications. It would be quite a while before the next 3D Zelda title. The next few years were dedicated to bring Zelda to Nintendo's newest hardware, the DS. The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass 2007 Phantom Hourglass was the first outing for Zelda on the Nintendo DS. The game made good use of the dual screens by finding innovative ways to work them into gameplay. Developers went through great links. <laughs> no? Okay. To incorporate the stylus and touchscreen capabilities into the gameplay in thoughtful and effective ways. The results were a success, with the game receiving positive reviews. It was developed based on the Four Swords model and features many of the same combat features and ideas. The gameplay is similar to other handheld Zelda games but with much higher graphical fidelity and gameplay capabilities due to the more advanced hardware. The success of Phantom Hourglass would inspire Nintendo's next addition to the franchise in 2009. The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks 2009 Spirit Tracks was the next entry in the Zelda DS lineup. Spirit Tracks is set in Hyrule after the events of Phantom Hourglass and features new train mechanics in the familiar cel-shaded art style. The gameplay remains highly similar to that of Phantom Hourglass with some minor optimizations. The game's development team built on the success of the touchscreen features from Phantom Hourglass to develop more innovative ways for players to use it during gameplay. Things like time limits in dungeons were removed to improve the gameplay experience based on user feedback. The game was met with generally positive reviews and sold around 2.6 million copies worldwide. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword 2011 After five years since the last 3D Zelda game, Skyward Sword was finally released for the Nintendo Wii. It proved to be one of the more polarizing releases in the Zelda series, as many players had complaints about the controls, graphics, and linear gameplay mechanics. The game has players take on the role of Link in the world of Skyloft, where he traverses the floating islands on a bird. Skyward Sword is notable because the story occurs at the very beginning of the Zelda timeline, setting the foundation for every subsequent Zelda game. Developers wanted to incorporate as much of the motion control mechanics into the game as possible and introduce a completely revamped combat system that was generally well received. The game was met with generally positive reviews though it did not quite reach the peaks of its 3D predecessors. The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds 2013 a Link Between Worlds was the first release for the Nintendo 3DS in 2013. It featured some of the most unique gameplay and stunning handheld visuals ever released at the time. 
New game mechanics like item rental systems and 2D transformations were developed to push the boundaries of the handheld Zelda series and bring it to the next generation. The game introduces new villains, characters, and mechanics in what many people regard as the true successor to Link to the Past. The game was met with very positive reviews and sold over 4 million copies worldwide. The Legend of Zelda The Breath of the Wild 2017 In 2017, Nintendo released Breath of the Wild for Nintendo Switch and once again revolutionized the gaming industry and set the bar when it comes to quality in video games. The game featured the largest open world of any Zelda game and was a true showcase of what the Nintendo Switch was capable of. Development of the game took around five years and saw Miyamoto and longtime director Eiji Aonuma once again team up to create one of gaming's most prolific masterpieces. Breath of the Wild was Nintendo's first real experience crafting an open world of this magnitude. But the developers truly rose to the occasion and gave us something truly breathtaking. Inspiration was drawn from many different sources, including other video games, folklore, and movies to create a world that felt alive and interactive to the player. It is widely regarded as one of the best games of all time and introducing many new mechanics, including stasis, cooking, and even mountain climbing. What is most impressive about the game is the amount of freedom the player has right from the beginning. Upon entering the world of Hyrule, the player is tasked with defeating Ganon. How the player does this and when is ultimately up to them. The number of choices available in the game, numerous dungeons, expansive open world, and immersive soundtrack all come together in what is the most highly rated Zelda game ever. It won numerous awards and sold over 28 million copies worldwide, making it the highest selling Zelda game ever. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom 2023 That brings us to the latest release in the Zelda franchise, Tears of the Kingdom. Being one of the most highly anticipated follow-ups of all time, it's no understatement to say that Nintendo had their work cut out for them for this one. Development of Tears of the Kingdom began shortly after Breath of the Wild was finished. Many of the new ideas found in Tears of the Kingdom were inspired while brainstorming DLC ideas for Breath of the Wild. After announcing the game at E3 2019, a then unnamed sequel to Breath of the Wild, development would start up full swing before debuting another trailer revealing gameplay, story, and a release window for 2022. Of course, Nintendo would go on to push the release date back to 2023. It was until September 2022 that the title of the game was revealed during a Nintendo Direct presentation. The amount of mystery surrounding Tears of the Kingdom leading up to its reveal in September 2022 helped to build some serious hype around the game. Reprising their respective roles as director and producer, Hidemaro Fujibayashi and Eiji Aonuma both returned to deliver a sequel to Breath of the Wild that would please fans. Not only would the game release to rave reviews, it is quickly becoming one of the fastest selling Zelda games of all time. With the game getting perfect scores from fans and critics, it's safe to say Nintendo really hit it out of the park with this one. Some highlights include improved performance over Breath of the Wild and new and engaging mechanics so the game still feels fresh. Tears of the Kingdom is shaping up to be a serious Game of the Year contender for 2023 and may go down as one of the most groundbreaking open world games ever made. Nintendo really honed in on what people enjoyed in the first game and doubled down on those features and then some. The results are a Zelda game with an unmatched level of freedom that gives players the room to be creative and tailor the gameplay just for them. And with that, we've gone over all existing Legend of Zelda titles. I hope you and Link have a ton of cool adventures in Tears of the Kingdom. Alright, let us know what you want to see covered in future videos and make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Bye for now!